Amen. So your paper is on the 20th, right? Tuesday. So you have to prepare yourself. I remember what happened last semester. You know, last the course is was about speed and accuracy. So if you think you have enough time, you know, once you they give the question paper to you, take your time, go to the it using five to ten minutes, and then you start working. If you are very good in mathematics, start with the mathematics aspect. If you are not very good, go and start with the written aspect. Now I'm anticipating that you'll be getting two data response questions. If I say data response, I mean the one that comes with calculation. Okay. So you may get two questions from that side. And then also maybe two written aspects. So in all, I'm anticipating that next semester, you will do better. However, it shouldn't ease into your head. Last semester, I know most of your grades weren't good. They weren't, they weren't encouraging if you're complaining. And that is why we are here to help you. So today is part of my tutorial. This is a personal tutorial I've organized. And anybody at all can join. Yes. So I've received feedback from some of your friends who are not familiar with this particular topic. So I want to touch on it again and then give you real examples on how you go around it. So please pay attention very well. Now, so like I always say, take your pen and paper. Don't just listen to me and follow keenly. So we are starting. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to open the forum for question. This meeting is also recorded. So after this meeting, I'm going to upload a video on YouTube so that if you need a ratification or you need further information, you can go back there and watch. So most of you are sending me questions every day, I understand, but <laughs> yes, yesterday I wrote to people, I have applied statistics on Saturday. We are all writing exams. So that's why I've organized a meeting for you, getting closer to your paper. I'm hoping I'll be able to hold two more meetings that I'll teach you areas that I think will come. But I encourage you to solve more of the data response question. I've sent you the past question, right? I've sent you other video materials and other trial questions. Please go through them. Don't overestimate the concern. Don't underestimate it. Just learn enough. That's what I always tell students. So quickly, we are starting. Any questions so far? So who has any question or who has any suggestion for me before I start the class? No question. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so you all recall that the beginning of this semester, you, you went for lectures and your lecturer told you one or two, right? Yes. So he told you that one way of measuring the well-being of any economy is to look at the GDP, right? And you know that GDP is a component of consumption, investment, government purchases, and what's net export. Now, over the few weeks, I also told you that to measure economic variables, we look at economic growth, we look at inflation, we look at employment and unemployment in the country. And we are all familiar with these ones, right? So next topic is that they are going to analyze what comes into the country and what goes out of the country. So that introduces us to the topic called the balance of what payment. Now with balance of payment, you're looking at goods that come into the country and goods that goes out of the country. You remember the components of GDP. We have the, the net export as a factor, right? That is why this topic is what is important. That is why we are treating this one too. Not only this one, we also want to look at the fact that what comes, what capital comes to the country or what money comes to the country, what goes out of the country, how does coming in and going out influence our dollar? You can see that the inflation rate is 33.9 as I speak. As economic students, you should be familiar with this. What is happening? Is it that we experience what you call a deficit or what is happening? So by the end of this lecture or by the end of this, you will get to understand why things are happening. Why Ghana, when we import more goods, it tends to affect our dollar or our dollars. What, what happens when we export more goods to other country? So the balance of payments is very important in the country. The only balance of payments, we call something the exchange rate. Please, if you join, kindly mute. 
So we call something the exchange rate. The exchange rate of every country is very crucial. The exchange rate determines how strong your currency is in the money market. If I say the money market, I'm talking about when we are trading one currency for the other. They are also going to look at money and its function. Then we look at the financial system. The financial system, how does the banks operate? Please, if you join, kindly mute. Because I'll have to take you out. Okay. So we are talking about financial system and money. What is the role of money? How did money evolve and everything? So please pay attention and let's go. Are we all set? Do you have your pens and books around you to make notes? Okay. So when we say balance of payments, we are looking at one. Please. Our international trading. When we say trading, is not only one way. Import and what exports. So balance of payment they recalls what comes into the country, what goes out. But here they said it recalls international trading. International trading looks at what is leaving the country. If you are trading with Togo, Togo is an international country. So anything beyond your borders. So balance of payment, we're looking at goods that we send in, the goods that they send here. We are looking at what we borrow and what we lend. Okay. We borrow and what we lend. Ghana, don't don't assume that because Ghanaians we are poor we are always but we know we also learn to other people or other countries okay so when we want to look at balance of payments we are going to look at goods that come to the country goods that goes out of the country money that comes to the country money that goes out capital that comes to the country and capital that goes out of the country okay good so balance of payment records each transaction as either a credit or a debit. Now, what does it mean? It means that when you bring any good inside the country, I take it again, when you bring good inside your country from other countries, okay, it is, we have a way of calling it. And when you send a good outside your country, we have a way of giving it to, okay, transaction that involve foreign transaction that involves spending foreign currency is entered as a what as a debit that is why our dollar is collapsing now because we have chinese who are keeping the dollars we have these Lebanese people who are keeping the dollars and they don't want to release the dollar so instead of using the ghana cities they prefer to hold the dollar that's why and it's encouraging people to also go in for the dollar okay so a, a balance of payments will be recorded as a debit or a credit. Let's move forward. Now, if you are saying balance of payments, you need to look at two main categories or two main bosses. One is current account. The other one is what financial account. Now, what is more important here, what is quite complex here, the one I've highlighted, is the what the current account. Okay. What is the current account? We are looking at one goose. If I say goose, the food, the drinks, the water that we import, and the cocoa, and the gold, and everything that we export, the goods that are extracted in the country, okay, that we export. So goods that goes out of the country and goods that comes in, it's a component of current account. So if you go to the and they write something, if they write in the good, and if they ask you, is this good captured in current account or financial account? You need to understand that any good that goes into the country or any good that comes into the country is captured as a current account. And current account can be a deficit or a debit. Going forward, you understand. And then current account, we are looking at payments for goods and services brought from other countries. Okay, good. So what we export and what imports. And then we have a call something net amount of interest and transfers received from and paid to other countries. How many of you have ever received Momo from your relative outside before? This is what you're talking about. Okay, good. So we are talking about any either a money or a good. Now the second component of balance of payment is financial account. This financial account is looking at investments. So 
the difference between the current account and financial account is that financial account is with investment. If I say investment, it is with capital, it is with money, it is with anything that you put up in somebody's country. So if we have a Ghanaian who has put up a, a, an industry or who has an industry or company in USA, that one will not be captured in current account, to be captured in what financial account because it's an investment in that country. The same way also KFC, because they've started their company in Ghana here, their, their thing will be captured in what financial account because it's an investment inside the country. Okay, so understand the difference between current account and financial account. Going forward, you get to understand more components that fall under current account and things that falls under what? Current account. Okay, so let's let's understand. I've explained current account and financial account. The difference between financial accounts and current account is that current accounts deals with what? Just investment. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay, let's move forward. Under the finan financial account. Yeah. Yeah, but, 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 uh, yes, you have a question. Uh, yeah, apart, yes, apart from investment, what is used to measure the financial account? Okay, apart from investment, you see, we call something reserve. Reserve. Every country has reserve. As you see in a bank operating, we call something reserve. One way of measuring financial accounts is a country's reserve. A country's reserve is how much has been kept in case of circumstances or unforeseen circumstances. We call something World Bank. World Bank keep reserves of what? Our money. Or let's say it can be in a form of gold or direct cash. You're supposed to keep that money with the bank or World Bank so that in the future, when something happens to you, they can release the money for you. That is why when Ghana wants money, we can go to IMF, we can go to World Bank because we have what you call reserve. So let me give you an, an illustrative example. Now you see APSA Bank. APSA Bank keep a reserve with Bank of Ghana. Why? As any bank is supposed to keep 25% of their reserve with Bank of Ghana. Now what they do is that if you don't do that and something happens to your bank, that is it. And it's compulsory for every bank in the country to keep their reserve with Bank of Ghana. It is 25%. As for the World Bank, I don't know. So one way of measuring a financial account is to look at the reserves. Okay, official reserves of government holdings or foreign currency. So we may want to hold our currency in other, in other, yes, so World Bank is, is a rich country. I don't really know. But then Ghana, one way of measuring our financial account is is our official reserves okay? Now let's take them one after the other. Are we following? Okay, let's continue. So, current accounts, please let's follow. Current accounts is divided into trade balance. Okay, you can see that when we're measuring GDP, we call something C plus I plus G plus what X. The X is the import and export. This is a major part of the import and export, is a trade balance. We call something trade balance. Trade balance, we are looking at what comes into the country and what goes out of the country in the form of goods and services. So Ghana, we, we export more of what our raw materials from the agricultural sector. We export food, we export this, we export that. You understand? So that's what we mean by trade balances. And we call something services. Who has, we are going to break this thing down. Uh, who has heard of, let's say, or those of you who have traveled outside before, we all know of the flight service in Ghana, right? Ghana, we used to have Ghana Airways in 2007, by a But if you go to other countries, they render services. So what services render to Ghana and what you render to other countries comprise of this one. So if you have a, a country that has an airline company, and we render services to foreigners. I mean, we export foreigners and they also bring in. in. That one is not importation of goods and services, but that one, that one is, sorry, that one is importation of goods, but that one is what is a service we are rendering. 
It doesn't come in a form of what's physical, but it's something that you render on somebody. We all know services. Good. We have quite something investment income and then unilateral transfer. Okay. You all know investment income, yeah. invest that we can receive from any investment. And then we call something unilateral transfer. What is it? This one is free services. Okay. Something that's, that is free that you don't pay for it. I know you all know of US aid. UK aid, I had the Chinese support they've been rendering. This company is rendering NGOs. You understand? Anytime they are doing that for you, it's not an investment. It's a fee amount they are giving to you. So we call it a unilateral. <laughs> Item thirteen. Okay, I'm sorry. Those of you in your boyfriend's room who are making noise, I will take you out. Uh, we have in Yashu de Abaha, will be on yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so the difference between the imports and exports is called the net exports. Okay, good. Okay, they are, so they are saying that the trade balance is the difference between. Hello, please, if you enter, kindly mute yourself. Kindly mute yourself so that you wouldn't distract anybody. Please, you don't have my time. You want to finish on time. This is just two sessions, then we are done. Okay, so the trade balance is looking at physical goods and services that we import, like I told you. And the services component include shipping, freight, financial services, and foreign travels. I'm, I'll touch on this one already, foreign travels. 10 minutes as ah, so then we have called something investment income records earnings on foreign investment this can is like financial accounts in current accounts but there's no current account so it is no financial account okay then we are talk about the unilateral transfer which include something that is like transfer payments that the foreigners come or we render to other countries because of our relationship with them Okay, so the largest item 13. Please, if somebody comes to make that noise, prompt me on the name, I'll just take them out. We are very serious here. So the largest items in the current account is a trade balance. Okay, the trade, you know the trade balance? The trade balance is found in the current account. Okay, the trade balance is, that, that is why with the components of GDP, it is more captured, the X minus M. That's, that's the trade balance. Or his other brother's name is the next export. Okay. So let's look at net interest and transfer from abroad are small and don't fluctuate much. So to study the current account balance, you have to look at what determines net exports. Okay. Let's look at the financial accounts. Or we call it financial capital. In some books, you can see it as financial accounts. I'm going to see financial capital. What is it? We are looking at the investment. Okay. The investment. You're talking about investment. I'm talking about capital. So what capital is exchanged between the two of us? The capital can be in the form of money. It can be in the form of what? Machine. It can be in a, a form of building. So what's the capital that we exchange? Mind you, if we go to the current account, we have what we call financial income from there. But it's financial accounts stands on its own, it's like that it takes into account only investment, and the investment is deals with what capital. Okay, so transaction that results in financial outflow, financial outflow are required as debit. So things that leave your country, if I'm, I'm a Ghanaian, I go and build in the US, let's say, or I go build a house in UK, it's an outflow, right? So it's recorded as a debit to the country because I should have invested that money in Ghana to gain or for the betterment of the country. Once I'm taking it out, it's recorded as what debit. And it, it comes in, or capital that come in, investment that comes in, they are recorded as what credit. So anything that comes to the country is a credit. Anything that goes out of the country is a debit. Okay. Any, any question?
Barista, please go over the FA. Okay. The FA, I was saying that the FA looks at the investment. Do you recall, I wanted to go and look at the GDP again. The component of GDP, we factor in investment. Now, every investment comes with capital. With that capital, there can be investment. So when we say financial accounts, we are looking at the investment between these two countries. And the investment or the capital can be in the form of what? Money. So if I'm investing, if I take my money, and if I go and buy, let's say, if I go to Bank of America online, and I go and buy treasury bills, it's, it's an outflow. I could have sent the same money to GCB to purchase the treasury bill. Since the money is leaving the country, it becomes an outflow. But if the same person, somebody in America, comes to Ghana and invests, it is called an inflow, which is what a credit to us, a no credit and loss, yes. But what financial accounts is looking at is looking at only capital. And I'm saying the capital goes beyond just money. So if somebody comes to build a house, somebody from Togo comes to build a house in Ghana, it is a financial, what is recorded as, is recorded in financial accounts, not current accounts. Mind you, this whole thing is looking at foreign and local. So if somebody from UK comes to Ghana to put up a building, a recorded in financial accounts, because the, the building is a capital that is going to be used in production of what other goods. Are we following? Do you understand? So the financial assets or the financial capital may be in the form of money, building, machine, anything that we can use to produce any other good. I know you are all a confident. So we know what capital is falls under what you call the FA, the financial account. Any question? Hello, Barrister. Yes. Um, please, what is the difference between financial account and capital accounts? Or it is the same? They are the same. Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. So financial or capital, they are they, in the book, sometimes they use they use them interchangeably, but they are the same. So that, that is why I was not focus on using capital, capital, capital throughout. Any question? Okay. The balance of payments must always balance. Why? We all know, this is CA stands for what? Current accounts. And this FA stands for financial accounts. It means the goods that we send in and goods that comes in. Financial things that we send out to the country and financial things that we bring out of the country, into the country should balance. If it, it doesn't balance, it means one country will be suffering. Okay, that is where the exchange rate comes to affect or the, the, the dollar rate comes to affect. Because if, you, if it happens that every day they are importing goods into your country more than you also exporting, or if, it's, if you see that people are always investing in your economy, even though the economy will be booming, it will be growing, at the end of the day, it tends to affect tends to affect your exchange rates and your whole economy. So for the best, the current accounts should balance with the financial accounts and should give us zero. Because when I'm importing $200 and somebody is also exporting $200, it cancels, right? If I import Maggi and somebody imports tilapia, I mean, we've, we've imported the same thing, or I import two mangoes, and somebody export two mangoes, it balances. So at the end of the day, nobody should have a deficit and nobody should have a credit. Okay, any question? Okay, let me touch on this one. Who is a, a borrower? A borrower is somebody who borrows from some people at a time or who cannot depend on themselves, but have to depend on other people for survival. So we call something net borrower. If you're a country like Ghana, and we are always growing from other countries. So a net borrower is a country that is growing more from the rest of the world, that is lending to the rest of the world, like Ghana. When we join the next session, I will tell you how Ghana has been growing since since, and how we went for HIPIC. But for this sake, let me quickly go to the net borrower for you. Now the net borrower is somebody who has been growing more from other countries than they give out. So if you will be eating from your friends, more than they give you, you become a net borrower. Who is a net lender? Is the opposite of the borrower. Somebody who gives more than he receives. 
somebody who some a country like Japan, a country like uh, USA, they don't have money. USA, they don't have money. They've been borrowing since USA has the highest debt. You can say it. it's not Ghana. Ghana, we are rich. Okay. So who is a debtor nation? A debtor nation is a country that during its entire history has borrowed more from the rest of the world than it has lent to. So Ghana is a debtor nation. Ghana is also a debtor nation and a debt borrower. Creditor nation. Creditor is country is a country who has been that has invested more in the rest of the world than other countries have invested in. A typical example is the UK. So understand these terms. They can ask you to explain them. Okay. Please any question. Let me take this time to take questions so that you have any question now, Claire. We have less than one minute for the meeting to end. When the meeting ends, is it the meeting the uh, Zoom was for? We join again. Okay. I will start over again. We join again. Any question? Uh, Marisa. Yes. I uh, yeah, actually want to ask that you say uh, US was born, but then we realize that Yes, they do more, more than Ghana. And at the end of the day, they are all grown. What, like, what? So I'll explain the next session. Okay, I've, I got your question. Now I'm going to explain your, your question in the next session. So let's join again. Yeah, Barista. Yeah. Uh, Please, this particular slide, can you 